Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope and today I'm going to talk about some of my favorite Kindle Unlimited authors. So I'm not going to put a bunch of graphics up on the screen or anything like I'm just going to talk about some of these authors going to be a little bit chatty. Um, I love Kindle Unlimited. It's like, I don't know, like $11 or something a month, but there's always deals where you get a couple months free and you can check out all the books and so many authors use Kindle Unlimited and honestly I'm just kind of obsessed with it. I'm always finding new people to try and I'm just going to share some of my favorite authors in case you love them too or in case you want to try them or you're looking for something different, whatever. So I have a list. Um, this is like probably not the most, um, like there's probably more that I didn't think of but I was sitting there looking and I was like, um, okay. <laughs> so. I'm going to talk about these authors and then, um, like I said, I'm sure there's more and I'm sure that I'll be doing this again because I'm forever on Bookstagram and everything else finding more authors. So, so my first favorite author on Kindle Unlimited is Jillian Dodd. I love Jillian Dodd's books. I've read like all of her books. So I first came across her years and years and years ago on iBooks and I read the entire Keaton Chronicles series on iBooks. And then I didn't really read that much else by her. I guess I still had some books, but I didn't read a ton of them. And I don't know what happened. I just was like a flake. And then I got Kindle Unlimited during quarantine the first time. And I was like, oh my gosh, all of her books are on Kindle Unlimited. So I read like the entirety of the Spy Girl series in a weekend. It's like seven books, eight books, nine books. I read the whole thing in a weekend. Um, then I read like the That Boy series and then I read all of the Kitty Valentine series like as soon as it came out I read that and I read Girl Off the Grid which is like a cute little standalone and it's very clean it's like YA I think and I love that one too and now I'm reading London Prep and reading like the next generation That Boy series as they come out I am an arc reader for her so I always get arcs of her books and read them as soon as they hit my Kindle. Like, they usually hit your Kindle at, like, 2 o'clock or something. And as soon as I get home, I'm like, absolutely love them. So, like, That Boy is, like, a small town romance series. And it has, like, covers different couples and, like, different families. So, to be fair, all of these are going to be, like, series where it's, like, the same couple and multiples. But you do meet other couples and everything else. So that's great. Spy Girl is this girl and she has trained to be a spy at this spy school and she gets put in this like undercover position as a socialite and she's like supposed to protect the prince and there's like a love triangle between her and the prince and this like American swimmer. Super fun. Love that one actually. I love a spy romance honestly, especially contemporary. The Keaton Chronicles is a, pe is a prep school romance series. Um, the first eight books I think are when they're in high school and it's this girl named Keaton and she's from California and she has a stalker so she goes like undercover hiding at this boarding school on the east coast and she makes this like whole family there and it's great and you get to see like bits of other relationships and then there's like a later bit and it's like six books I think but it's 10 years later and they are all living in Hollywood. They're all very successful and you're like seeing them as adults. Absolutely love it. A new one just came out. It's called like a very Keaton Christmas, I think. Um, let's see. The Kitty Valentine series, they are like romantic comedies where this girl Kitty is a writer and she's just like spinning a wheel and dating a guy to get her romance tropes in fantastic absolutely love that series as well and then London Prep is um this girl named Mallory and she goes to boarding to like an exchange program in London for three weeks and she meets this group of guys Harry Noah and Muhammad and they become her best friends and there's a love triangle between her Harry and Noah um, and she finds out that she's staying in London so you get to see a bit of all of that and I just absolutely love it. Jillian Dodd is probably like the only person on here that I have read every book that they've published. Um, I have read all of her books. Um, I've known about her the longest too and honestly just absolutely love her. They're so much fun and some of it is a little bit steamy so super good. Then I have Lucy Score. I am super into Lucy Score. Uh, so I just read Things We Never Got Over which is the first book in 
the Knock 'em Out series. It's a small town romance series, a small town called Knock 'em Out, Virginia. Um, and I love this town. I love small towns. Lucy Score does fantastic small towns. So love small towns and I love the quirky characters. I think she does a really great job of like building up the romance. So much fun. And I just cannot wait until the next book in that series comes out. Also read the Benevolence series by her. That's like a three book series and it's a town in, are they like Maine or something? And it's a small town called Benevolence and you have like a firefighter and someone in the military and another couple that is, I'm drawing a blank right now, but you know, people that are really involved in the town, it's super good. Um, she has way more series than this. Like she has so many series. Another one that I'll mention though is one that she wrote with Claire Kingsley, who's also going to be one of my favorites. And that is Bootleg Springs. I read the entirety of the Bootleg Springs series, which is like five or six books in a weekend. So good. Small town murder mysteries. Like absolutely love it. So like as you read that series, more parts of the mystery are uncovered and it's got a little bit of everything. So you have like new neighbors and like a jock and like a really shy, quiet girl, police officer, teacher, a second chance romance, like a childhood friends to like people that disappear and like all kinds of stuff. Super good. Cannot recommend enough. And then that I think is a spinoff or there's a score the other series is a spinoff there's one called Blue Moon which I've only read like one book in another small town romance it's a quirky small town so super fun I definitely suggest those and then Claire Kingsley does the Bailey Brothers series super good love it it's like the last book in that one just came out I think it's like six or seven books plus like a little novella really good really fun characters a lot of angst in that one honestly and it's just there's like firefighters and like someone that works on cars and just like all kinds of fun stuff I just really enjoyed that one too and then that one I think is a spinoff of the Miles family which I'm in the process of reading now the Miles family owns a vineyard and a lot of the stuff that's going on is on that vineyard I've read like two books in that series I think um, like a brother's best friend romance and like a second chance romance just honestly so 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 good I really enjoy those and she has more books too but I just haven't 100% started on all of those so hopping away from like small towns for a minute only James is one of my absolute faves so the necessary evil series I started reading that in January I guess oh my god I love it so we have a family of adopted brothers. They were all adopted by this scientist, and basically they are all absolute psychopaths, but they're not like psychopaths that are gonna become serial killers or something, so they are helping to eradicate the evil in the world, AKA unalive people, um, who, you know, the law has missed, basically. And, these brothers don't necessarily know how to like love they don't think that's like feelings that they feel but all of them meet this one guy that is just perfect for them and it's like this series I think is absolutely amazing if you had told me last year that one of my favorite series of the year and I've rated all of these four or five stars was going to be serial killer romances um I would have been like mm, nah but um yeah, because they are so good. Like, I'm absolutely loving that series. I think there's two books left. So one just came out pretty recently, and there's two left. And I'm going to be devastated when it's over, but Only James has a huge backlist, so I can keep reading those. I'm super excited to keep reading those, honestly, because I am, like, I am so obsessed. Like, I read those the first day they come out. Like, as soon as those books are out, I am reading them, and I just, I just absolutely adore it. Another one that I'm really enjoying and it's ongoing, Samantha Whiskey's Carolina Reaper series is the one that I am just so, so, so into. So this is a hockey romance series. It is about this hockey team called the Carolina Reapers and they live in South Carolina, I think right near Charleston. Um, and this is like all the guys on the team and sometimes they get traded out or they like willingly trade or whatever but it's like the guys on the team and they're like meeting the girls and honestly everyone is so different and you get so many like different types of romances 
and they're a little bit formulaic I'll say that so 78% is when conflict always happens like as soon as you get 78% you're like shit but like ugh, it's just they're so good I love them um so I mean clearly I can be all over the place with those ratings so like sometimes they're three stars sometimes they're five stars but two of them have been like maybe three of them have been five star reads for me and I just really love it but she also has like a Seattle Sharks series that is another hockey team the Seattle Sharks I didn't vibe with the Sharks as much I read a couple of those and I just wasn't vibing with them as much but I love the Carolina Reapers and she has another one out Re like a series recently it's like crimson something I think it's a vampire romance series so I'm probably going to start reading that one closer to Halloween because I think that'll be a fun like Halloween series to read but I really really enjoy her writing I think it's great and I think her characters are a lot of fun and you always get to see like more and more and more of the characters and I'm just here for that then we have Adriana Locke I discovered Adriana Locke I think this year and I love her like no, I discovered her last year, and I love her. The first series that I read is the Gibson Boys series. It's like blue-collar romances. One of them is a mechanic, one of them is a teacher, another one of them is a mechanic, and I'm drawing a blank at what the other one does, but, like, so good. Love them. It's so much fun. Um, she has a ton of books. I'm never going to finish reading her books. So I've read some of that series. I've read... The first book in the Landry Family series, I think, and that one is fun. The first one that I read was like a sports romance, and there's one, Honey Creek. I read the first one in that. She has really good small town romances as well, clearly, and now I'm reading the Carmichael series. Uh, Flirt is the first book in that series, and I just finished it and it's a lot of fun like I really love her books like they're so much fun you get so drawn into the world the characters are just absolutely fantastic and honestly she probably has like eight more series that I didn't even mention here because like I don't even know there's so many um, but I'm eventually going to read her whole backlist because I love her books. I'm such a fan. And I just get sucked in. And it's like you can't stop. I know I've read, like, the Gibson Brothers or the Gibson Boys, like, probably in a weekend. <laughs> I'm a big weekend reader, apparently. Another one is Laura Thalassa. So I came across the Four Horsemen series and, like, loved it. Still haven't read Death, though, because, as I've said before... I am afraid to read Death because then the series is going to be over and I'm going to be really sad. She does have a lot of other series. I think they're all a little paranormal-esque, uh, which is great. I quite enjoy those. But I'm afraid to read Death because I'm going to be sad that it is over. I even passed on Pestilence to my mom. I was like, read this one. It's really interesting. And I fell in a rabbit hole about the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and everything else. Um, I can try to find that tell you what they are so hold on should have looked this up before wow it's in my like searches on wikipedia that's how bad it is so i think it tells you like the, the i think we're thinking like the four horsemen come in the book of revelation um and there's a scroll in god's right hand with seven seals um and it's like four beings that ride out on white, red, black, and pale horses, which I guess I don't know if I fully understand that because it's a pale horse, not a white horse, but like whatevs. So the first one is going to be Pestilence, I guess. Um, a white horse, he had a bow and a crown and he went on conquering something. Um, so, like, clearly, I there's better interpretations than what I'm going to give you. And then the next one is a red horse, and he was granted to take peace from Earth, and that men would slay one another, so he is war. And then the black horse, um, a black horse, and he had a pair of scales in his hand. Um, and basically, he is, like coming around telling you the price of wheat and barley um which seems to be honestly to me like famine would be the most terrifying thing to me but he seems like the least terrifying of the horsemen to me like 
in these verses because I feel like if someone was riding around screaming the price of grain, I would be like, what? Anyway, the last one, a pale horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and Hades was following with him. Authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and famine and with pestilence and by the wild beasts of the earth. Anyway, so the four horsemen of the apocalypse are the four horsemen in the series. We have pestilence, war, famine, and then death. So I've read the first three. Super great, honestly. I really enjoyed that series. I don't know why I went on a tangent to read you about those when that was that seems seems unnecessary. Anyway, next I have Laura Pavlov. So I read the Willow Spring series by Laura Pavlov. It's kind of a small town romance series, but not all of them take place in the small town. Uh, it's this group of friends and. We have, like, college romance, a fake relationship set in a big city, um, enemies to lovers, second chance, and, um, and, like, a high school one. So, super enjoyed that series. It's a lot of fun, and I know that she has a lot of other small town series as well, so I'm definitely going to be trying those. I just finished the Willow Springs series pretty recently, but I'm not sure that it's actually finished because I did see on her Instagram, it seemed like there was another one. So, I am kind of interested to see how that goes. Ilsa Madden Mills is also a fantastic author. I have not read a ton of Ilsa Madden Mills books, but I love the, like, three that I've read. So, I read Dear Ava. That one was amazing. And then I read Not My Match. Also, just absolutely fantastic. And I recently read Beauty and the Baller, and that was, like, a five-star read. I absolutely loved it. I cannot stop seeing that one's praises. I love it. They're all very different. Um, they can be like quite dramatic. There's like a lot going on, but it's so good. You get sucked right into these books. Like I love her writing and I'm going to read like her whole backlist because like, ugh, you just get sucked in. I was like right in the middle of a reading slump when I was reading Beauty and the Baller and I still couldn't stop reading it. Like I thought it was amazing. So like I 100% recommend her. Sophie Lark is one that I have just come across, and I read The Heir um, of the King the Kingmaker series, book one, and I cannot, like, I'm dying to read the next one, but I have, like, readings to do for other videos and stuff, so I'm waiting, but I literally cannot, so you can expect a video about Kingmaker soon, because I was absolutely obsessed, and then she has all these other ones that, like, tie in, and there's, like, crazy reading orders and blah, 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 like, no, I'm absolutely obsessed, I cannot wait to read it, like, I love this series so I 100% recommend her like these are mafia romances I think they're all mafia romances but like so good is Kingmakers is set like at a school like a Hogwarts-esque type school except for it is for like mafia kids uh, mafia kids from all over the world super interesting like super interesting premise it maybe sounds like it won't work but like it 100% worked I cannot recommend that series enough then Melanie Harlow right back in it with the small town romances I love Melanie Harlow Cloverly Farms, 100%. Bellamy Creek, is that Melanie Harlow? Mm, I don't know, but she does do some other ones, and they're fantastic too. So, like, I've read two series by Melanie Harlow, I think. I'm still reading Cloverly Farms, like, the, the most recent one that came out I need to read. But, like, I love her books. Um, I mean, some of them, I'm kind of like, eh. But, like, honestly, a single dad romance, if you need a single dad romance, you go to Melanie Harlow. She's fantastic. But she also does Great Friends to Lovers, and she just does such fun series. I really like it. I love how interconnected they all are. I just think they're so much fun. Cannot stop reading them. Like, I will always say that I love Melanie Harlow's books. She was supposed to be going to a Polycon this year, and I'm also going to a Polycon this year. And then she had to cancel, and I was so sad because, like, I really, 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 really wanted to, like, meet her and get her to sign a book. And then the last one that I'm going to mention is Eliza Rain. So her books are maybe a little more like YA, but she does like paranormal-esque romances, but her characters are Greek gods. And I was so very here for it. So I read the Hades Trials and the Ares Trials. I know there's like a Poseidon Trials out as well, but I was so into it. Like you're in this world with the gods and they all live in these different worlds that are like zodiac signs so like i'm a taurus dionysus is the taurus one um and it's just like crazy and like drunk but i was just so excited and i loved it and i started reading the hades trials but like not all the books were out and i was so upset and then i was like i don't know if i'm gonna read the aries trials and then of course i like read all of them i was like 
So super good, fun take on Greek mythology if you're interested in something like that, and I 100% am. Super fun take on it. I really liked the Hades and Persephone take on it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I love a Hades and Persephone retelling as well, so cannot recommend those enough. I think they're a lot of fun. I recommend all of these authors, honestly. Like, I would not be sitting here telling you how much fun they are or how much I like them if, like, I really didn't because that would be a waste of all of our time. But I absolutely love all these authors. There are clearly other authors that I read quite a bit of, but these guys are my favorites right now. I'm so, like, excited to continue reading, like, books. I'm probably reading another Adriana Locke one, like, as we speak on my phone. Like, just absolutely love it. Absolutely here for it. So if you, you know, have any more questions, just reach out to me and I can recommend you some books from them because like love it but that's all that I have for you guys today I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time bye